In the future, the world is divided into two sides, the rich people on the offshore and the poor people on the inland. When the poor people turn 20, they have one chance to pass a selection program called the process. The chosen ones are the 3% and they never return. In the year 104 of the process, Michelle hears a voice from her earpiece telling her the gates to the selection process are open. A huge crowd in the inland is already making their way there, so Michelle meets with her friend Bruna and they join the walk. After climbing a very long path up a hill, the participants arrive at a facility where they're disinfected and given clean clothes. Then Ezekiel appears to explain that only 3% of them will be chosen to go to the offshore, where the founding couple created the perfect world. He also mentions there are rebel groups that want to destroy the system, but he swears they'll never win. Ezekiel talks directly to some participants using their names as a form of manipulation and makes everyone chant words of gratitude for the process. While the candidates are directed to the interview rooms, Ezekiel meets with Aline, who he doesn't recognize. She explains she was sent to do a routine evaluation of the process, which was a last-minute decision. After checking her identity, he goes to complain to council member Nair, who reminds him this year's process is important than usual because for the first time in 100 years, someone was murdered offshore. Since Ezekiel chooses who will live there, the community blames him for sending a murderer and other council members want to replace him. After the call is over, Ezekiel puts his head in water until he can't take it anymore. The participants are being asked all kinds of questions. Some are riddles to test intelligence, others are as more personal questions about things like their hygiene habits or their personal beliefs. A girl is too nervous and can barely put two words together, so she's eliminated on the spot. A boy gives lots of confident answers, but interviewer Denise can tell it's all memorized stuff with no actual personality or originality and kicks the boy out too. The guy protests so much that he has to be dragged out by force. Michelle is asked if she knows anyone who made it through the process and answers her boyfriend, swearing she doesn't want to pass only because of him. However she still wears the necklace he gave her, so the interviewer dares her to take it off to prove she wants to go offshore for herself. After she does so, the man tells her she did the right thing because her boyfriend's profile says he's dead. Back to Ezekiel, he's called by Kasha because they've caught a member of the rebel group known as the cause. The man is getting tortured for information and he reveals one of the selected participants as part of his group, but he doesn't say whom. While the approved candidates move to the next stage, the angry loser jumps off a balcony to self-delete. The facility workers immediately take the body away and tell the selected group not to worry. Next all the candidates are scanned to check their registration. Joanna notices that Raphael has a fake registration, but the scanner approves him and he passes to next test. The candidates are given a pile of blocks and three minutes to assemble as many cubes as possible. They expect a minimum of nine and fewer will result in elimination. When the test begins, many participants just grab a bunch of pieces for themselves, but Michelle notices that Fernando is struggling to reach because of his wheelchair and she pulls blocks over for him. Everyone builds quickly, however many people start panicking when the time is about to run out. Raphael only has eight, so he steals one from his neighbor and the guy gets eliminated instead. Michelle only has eight too, but Fernando arranges her eight cubes into one larger cube to make it nine, so she passes. Joanna also passes because she's built 11. During the lunch break, everyone judges Raphael for being a cheater. He starts ranting and approaches a big guy to annoy him, causing the man to start beating him up. Soon other candidates join the beating, but Marco feels bad and makes them stop. After Raphael gets up, Joanna points out he took the beating to get sympathy and asks for an alliance, saying that if he betrays her, she'll reveal that he faked his registration. In the meantime as Akiel meets with Denise. He doesn't blame her for the candidate's death, but he still pushes her head in a bowl of water, ignoring Aline's protests. When he takes her out he explains he does that to himself as a reminder that what they do is life and death. Denise leaves after saying she understands, only to returns a moment later to thank Ezekiel for everything. At that moment Kasha tells Ezekiel they have a lead. Michelle and Bruna are pulled away from lunch and taken to Kasha. She covers their eyes with a black compound and leads them into a room, where she removes the compound and tells them about the mole. Their intel says this mole lives on the same block as the girls, meaning one of them must be the rebel. The girls swear it's not them, so Kasha gives them three minutes to confess or she'll kill them both. After Kasha leaves the room, the girls have an argument since they both keep on swearing they aren't a rebel. In the end they agree to attack Kasha to escape. Then Michelle starts remembering all the training she received with the rebels. She never had a boyfriend, the necklace had been a random prop for a makeup story that could earn her sympathy. Michelle joined the cause because she wanted revenge on Ezekiel for killing her brother. When Kasha comes back, Bruna attacks her and immediately gets shot. Michelle tries grabbing Kasha's gun, but Ezekiel arrives and gets it first. He just pushes Bruna's body off Cassia, who now believes Bruna had been the mole. They ask Michelle to keep the secret and they send her back to the waiting room. Then Michelle finds a corner to cry in private. Next the candidates are put through a physical examination. When it's Fernando's turn, the scanner detects the wheelchair and rings an alarm, so he's taken away. In a lab, a doctor confirms he can't feel anything on his legs and injects a green substance into a bruised area on his back. 
A glow appears for a few seconds and after feeling some pain in his back, Fernando is shocked to feel his legs again. The doctor explains this will only last for a few minutes and to get the full treatment he must pass the process. Fernando gets back on his chair and joins the candidates going to their next test. The room looks like a house containing mannequins in various positions. The participants are told to analyze the scene and figure out what happened to a blue mannequin, who appears in distress. While Michelle's group starts looking for clues, they keep hearing the speakers announcing what groups are being eliminated for getting the answer wrong. Michelle notices the mannequins have vaccine scars, meaning they're from the offshore. After lots of observation, Fernando shares his theory, the hostess inviting some friends for dinner because she wanted to poison the woman her husband was having an affair with. Fernando is proud of his conclusions and wants to press the button to contact the examiner, but Raphael stops him saying that solution is wrong because the process wouldn't show them adultery and murder happening on the offshore. He thinks the dead mannequin is allergic to silver because everyone is wearing something made of metal except for her. Most of the group brings out objects that confirm the theory and when they press the button to share it, they're told they're correct. Everyone in Michelle's group passes except for a boy who did nothing to help. During another break, Joanna brings Lucas to the bathroom so they can get dirty inside a stall, not knowing there's another candidate that can hear them. Meanwhile Aline notices Ezekiel leaving the building. He's outside, gathering some things hidden under rocks to disguise himself. Aline uses the security cameras to spy on him and is surprised to see him in a bad neighborhood posing as a beggar. When he finally realizes the cameras are following him he runs away, dropping a bunch of food in the process. Moments later the candidates are divided into groups of seven and sent to another room. There's a bag with only six coins and after 15 minutes, only those holding a coin will make it through. If after 15 minutes they haven't chosen who is out, the whole group will be eliminated. Raphael immediately grabs a coin and announces he's keeping it, so Marco grabs him with great strength and forces him to drop it under threat. They keep all the coins in the bag and start the discussion, however the argument goes on for a while and they can't reach an agreement. With only five minutes left, they decide to draw names using Agatha's scarf. They make strips and whoever picks the shortest will be out. Joanna is the loser, so everyone else grabs a coin from the bag when the examiner comes by. Yet when Lucas reaches in, he finds the bag empty. It turns out Joanna hit a coin all along and now she leaves with the winners while he's kicked out. Afterward all the candidates insert their coins in a machine to receive drinks except for Joanna, who keeps remembering how men in her neighborhood used to beat her up on the streets. When Ezekiel comes back, he checks the cameras to find himself and runs the facial recognition software, but it comes up with no match. Then he sticks his face in water. Later Aline sends the footage to Mateus, the council member who wants to bring Ezekiel down. He orders Aline to find out what Ezekiel is hiding. At the same time, Nair informs Ezekiel that Aline is working for Mateus, so he should be careful. For the next test, candidates are called a group at the time instead of being all tested together. Those left in the waiting room watch the eliminated participants left with wet pants. Denise calls Michelle's group and explains they have to cross the tunnel as a group in five minutes. Inside the tunnel, they find a countdown and flickering lights that make it hard to see. Soon they start hearing voices and Fernando sees himself walking again. It turns out there's gas in the tunnel making them hallucinate and they must overcome their paranoia to get out. Soon everyone is frozen in fear except for Joanna, who runs ahead and makes it to the end. However when she asks to be let out, she's reminded that the whole group must be at the door at the same time. Joanna also keeps hearing voices telling her how horrible she is, but she ignores them and keeps going through the tunnel to push the others toward the door. One by one Joanna rescues everyone, even dragging Agatha by the legs. With only three seconds left, they put their hands on the scanner and open the door, which stops the gas at the same time. Afterward the winning candidates are taken to dorms to spend the night. Agatha is still stuck in a panic attack, but the examiner promises it'll wear off soon. Fernando and Michelle chat in private and end up kissing. While Joanna rests, she remembers the day she broke into the house of the guys that attacked her to steal a gun and a bag with supplies. On her way out, she was startled by a noise and she shot her gun. To her shock, the noise came from a toy car and she had accidentally killed a young child. In the present, Joanna notices someone moving around and follows the figure to the bathroom. When she looks into a stall, she thinks she sees the dead child. It's actually Agatha, who jumps on her to strangle her. Raphael finds them and at first he only watches, but eventually he cuts in and stops Agatha just in time. Meanwhile Ezekiel gets an alert on the computer and sees a kid sneaking around. He goes to investigate and finds the child in a hallway. His name is Augusto and he's there because he's hungry. After making sure to delete the footage with Augusto's face, Ezekiel takes him to his room to share dinner. It turns out the food Ezekiel had taken to the bad neighborhood had been for this kid, so he explains he won't be able to visit for a while because he's being watched. Ezekiel gives him a pair of glasses so Augusto can see better, he also gives him a cube to play with. When Aline knocks on his door, Ezekiel hides Augusto before letting her in. She asks why he has two plates out and if it's normal for employees to leave the building during the process, but Ezekiel dodges all her questions. After she leaves, Ezekiel gets Augusto out of the building and tells him to never come again. 
Back to Joanna, she remembers the day she asked a woman to give her a fake registration. The implant had to be inserted through surgery and was under the name of the previous owner, so the girl became Joanna to match it. A few hours later, Joanna woke up from the surgery to learn there was a bounty on her head for killing the child. The woman was disappointed in her and kicked her out. In the present Raphael finds her and sees the scar. He tells her she isn't a bad person and they make their alliance stronger. In the morning, Joanna and Fernando leave the room and discover the way they came through is now blocked by a wall. While Fernando tells the others that they're trapped, Joanna investigates a vent. Marco tries opening a door and pulling some levers by their beds, but nothing happens. They search the area but there are no employees or food anywhere. Marco discovers a panel on the wall and thinks about the life in his old family home, which makes him realize what the test is. He calls the others over and shows them the lines of numbers on the panel. They need to memorize them and take them to the corresponding room, where they'll pull the levers by matching them to the codes. They must coordinate their movements and do it at the same time to make it work. By moving quickly, the teams pull the levers and successfully activate the vent, which drops some food and water for them. Unfortunately the gate isn't open yet and the food is enough for only one person. They argue over who should get it and choose to go alphabetically to be fair, so Agata eats first. Meanwhile Aline goes to Ezekiel's room and tries using his computer, which requires a fingerprint to access it. She picks a print off the cube puzzle and uses it on the computer, but she gets rejected. This sends an alert to Ezekiel. Aline continues to search the room until Kasha stops her and takes her away. Ezekiel calls the council and accuses Mateus to send a spy in front of the others. In the meantime Aline analyzes the print from the cube. Back to the candidates, every time they solve a series of numbers, the vent gives them more food and the panel resets with another quiz. The team keeps working together without issues and eventually everyone eats something, so nobody is disqualified. Ezekiel refuses to let everyone pass and decides to make a few changes. The candidates keep on working but the next 10 times they solve the panel, no food is dropped and the group is getting exhausted. An argument ensues and they decide to go to bed for now, ignoring Marco's pleas to keep going. Agata stays to keep staring at the panel, obsessing over the numbers. At that moment a bunch of food falls and the candidates run to get some as they push each other. Michelle raises her voice to stop them so they can divide the packets fairly. Marco realizes all this food means the test has changed and they need to find a way to get out. The strongest candidates break some beds and use the pieces to try to force the door open. After lots of effort, they manage to open it wide enough to put a metal bar to hold it. However the bar is starting to bend and everyone worries about getting crushed, so Raphael crosses first. At the end of a corridor, he finds another door that is also locked, so he has to go back and drop the bad news. The working team has finished all their food because of the exhaustion, so Marco guides them to try to get food from the others. When a guy refuses, Marco gets so aggressive that he almost kills him, forcing him to hand over the food. Then Marco guides his group to steal the food from every room, sometimes making some candidates hide in tight spaces to keep order. A flashback shows he comes from a family who always won the process and moved to the offshore after letting a child behind to carry on the legacy. Marco also left a pregnant woman before joining and thinks he's some kind of elite. Fernando sees all this from afar and moves ahead to warn the other rooms. Joanna keeps searching the area and finds Agata unconscious on the floor, so she takes her shoes. Putting them on her hands, Joanna begins to climb through the vent, only to find Ezekiel waiting at the end. While Michelle, Fernando, and a few others build a barricade, Ezekiel tells Joanna that they did pass the first half of the test, but the point is to teach them the world isn't fair so they'll show their true colors. The gang continues to go after the food and Marco hits a woman with a metal bar, which makes even his own group uncomfortable. Raphael realizes the girl is dead and calls Marco out, but when he tries to punch him the gang stops him. Now Raphael has no choice but to run, and eventually he reaches the barricade. At first the others don't want to let him in, but after he whispers something in Michelle's ears, she lets him pass. Meanwhile Ezekiel tells Joanna that the candidate started this and they must end it. He also offers some food, but if she eats it she'll be eliminated. He wants her to go back in, finish the test, and prove she deserves better. While Marco's gang breaks the first barricade, Joanna goes back and knocks out a guard with a metal bar. Then she brings out the people Marco had isolated and guides them on a counterattack. A huge fight ensues with the candidates punching and kicking each other all over the place, but Marco's gang still goes down first. Suddenly Joanna yells to make them stop and tells the people behind the other barricade to come out. An alarm starts ringing and both doors finally open, so the candidates rush to get out. An unconscious Agata, the dead girl, and Marco's gang are left behind. Marco is heavily bleeding and can barely move, but he makes an effort and crawls to the door, which is now closing. He isn't fast enough and the door crushes him. As the group makes their way out of the building, Raphael thinks about the last night with his brother. It turns out Raphael had already tried the process and failed. This year was his brother's turn, so Raphael put him to sleep with alcohol and stole his implant, taking his name as well. Then he told the rebels that he found a way to join the process again. On a garden, the participants meet Ezekiel, who says only 9% of candidates get that far. 
When Ezekiel goes back to the facility he's confronted by Aline, who shows him a picture of a gusto she obtained by analyzing the fingerprint. She hasn't reported anything to the council yet and offers two options. If she talks, he would be confined to the recovery and treatment center until he dies. But she will keep the secret if he finishes the year and resigns by naming her his successor. A flashback reveals Ezekiel used to be married to an examiner named Julia. Whenever Ezekiel was too stressed, Julia would gently massage his head in the water. One day during the process, Julia eliminated a candidate because she had a kid, but she didn't tell this to the other team members when they were confused by her choice. Ezekiel and Julia lived happily for another year, and when the next process started, Ezekiel asked Julia to be assistant to the leader of the process. When the rebels started a riot in the poor neighborhood, the officers shot a man by accident. Ezekiel, Julia, and Kasha watched it all on the cameras, noticing a kid looking at the officers from afar. After Ezekiel and Kasha left, Julia took a better look at the child and had a breakdown when she noticed it was a gusto. Later Julia was sent to deal with a candidate that kept complaining because she was unfairly eliminated, and the girl told Julia it was easy for her because she had everything. This made Julia snap and assault the candidate, kicking her until another employee stopped her. Afterward Ezekiel told her that working in the process may not be for her so she should return to the offshore, making her think he wanted to get rid of her. Julia insisted she wanted to stay and there was nothing wrong with her. However when she was alone she kept looking at a gusto screenshot. The following year while Ezekiel was busy with the next process, Julia kept using the computer to try to find Augusto's address. This started to affect her sleep cycle and Ezekiel became suspicious. One night Ezekiel checked the computer and discovered Julia had watched the same video 127 times. The next morning Ezekiel told Julia what he discovered and begged her to talk or he would have to send her to the recovery center. After he promised to keep the secret, Julia confessed that Augusto was her son and she felt guilty because she abandoned him to enter the process. She wanted to see him again, but Ezekiel said it wasn't possible and she had to wait for the kid to pass the process too. A few days later Julia watched the video again and finally managed to find Augusto's address, so she decided to leave the facility. Ezekiel noticed and ordered the guards to close the gate, but Julia rolled under it just in time. A desperate Ezekiel went after her, quickly catching her and carrying her back. Then he sent her to the recovery center on the offshore. That night Julia took out the printed screenshot of Augusto and finally gave up. She went to the beach and walked into the water to self-delete. The next day Nair informed Ezekiel of Julia's death, saying it was the first self-deletion in offshore history. This caused Ezekiel to start putting his head in water. Later while looking through Julia's stuff, Ezekiel found Augusto's picture, so he dressed as a beggar and went to find him. In an old building, he lured Augusto out with food and showed him Julia's ring, saying it had all his mother's memories. He could only have it when he got to the offshore. In the present, Ezekiel learns from Nair that Aline filed her report with only praise for him. Meanwhile Michelle talks to Raphael in private because he knows she's with the rebels, that's what he whispered to her. He explains he's with the cause too and saw a picture of her at headquarters. They agree to keep each other's secret. Then the candidates are given individual rooms, where they find images of themselves with their families. When the images on the screen disappear, the families show up to visit the participants. Fernando's father confesses that the families are brought under a bribe, they'll get paid if they convince the candidates to leave. Fernando is considering giving up after seeing so much violence and death, but his father wants him to stay. An argument ensues and in the end the father tells Fernando that if he gives up, he won't have a home to return to because he won't take care of him anymore. Fernando has no choice but choosing to stay. Joanna is an orphan, yet she gets a visitor that knocks her out from behind. When she wakes up, she learns the man came to find her to get the bounty on her head, but now he's pretending to be her dad to get the money. If she doesn't cooperate, he'll kill her for the bounty. Joanna says she'll play along, but when the man unties her, she punches him and tries to leave. However the door is locked and the guy catches up to her, bringing her down to start strangling her. When Joanna tells him to do it because she wants to go to the offshore, the man lets go and explains he was sent by Ezekiel to test her. They had to make sure she didn't join the process only to escape from the bounty hunters, and she's passed the test. Michelle has no family either, so an examiner explains that she has 30 minutes to choose between the money or the process. While thinking about her brother and Bruna, Michelle pours herself a glass of water and accidentally breaks the box with the money. When the examiner returns, he explains the coins aren't real, and Michelle informs him she's chosen to stay. Raphael and his mother have a huge argument because she wants him to take the money to help the family, especially after what he did to his brother, but he refuses. In the end his mother slaps him and leaves. On her way out, she yells that Raphael betrayed his own family. He watches her go and notices a few candidates did choose the money. In the meantime Ezekiel brings the cube to Augusto and says goodbye. He won't come back ever again so from now on Augusto has to take care of himself. When he returns to the facility, he tells Kasha that Aline is blackmailing him, but doesn't share the details. After the test is over, the remaining candidates are told they'll be summoned individually from now on. While waiting, Fernando visits Michelle and they end up getting dirty. 
When the interviews begin, Joanna is first on the list, however her quitting test was the replacement for her family test so she's already passed. Michelle is next. She's given a special outfit and told she has to convince a couple to sign their child up for the process when the time comes. However when she enters the room, Michelle finds Bruna's parents and Cassie tells her through the earpiece that she must tell them about Bruna's death. After some hesitation, Michelle tells the parents that Bruna died in an accident, causing them to cry. Then Michelle says she's there to apologize in name of the process and still tries to convince them to sign up their other daughter, which makes them very angry. When they try to leave, Michelle confesses her brother died in the process. She cries as she describes how he died in the process and for many years, she hated the system. But when she joined the process, she realized she was doing this so his death wouldn't be in vain. She thinks Bruna's sister could do the same, and the parents agree to sign her up. Michelle passes her test and when Kasha asks about the story, she pretends she made it up. Meanwhile Fernando is challenged to come up with a new test for the process in 30 minutes. When the time runs out, he shares his idea, candidates need better motivation, so they should be tested without knowing they are. An examiner would come up with a lie to make them choose between the process and something important, like a parent dying. This idea allows Fernando to pass. Raphael must project some images on opposite walls at exactly 6 pm. Since the controllers are at opposite ends of the hall, he must convince another candidate to help him. He tries asking the first guy he sees, but he's been eliminated. Next he goes looking for Joanna, who agrees to help him if he confesses why he faked his registration. She tells him the administration already knows about her and she's been forgiven, so she'll help if his reason had been forgivable too. Raphael refuses to tell her, so he tries Fernando next. When Fernando turns him down too, Raphael tells him to do it for Michelle and shares they're both rebels. If Fernando snitches on them, they'll both be killed. Fernando has no choice but to help him and at 6 pm the images successfully appear on the walls at the same time, so Raphael passes as well. When Michelle returns to her room, she retrieves a glass shard from the trash can and uses it to remove a poison capsule from her hip. While closing the wound, she remembers how a rebel had given her the capsule, explaining she had to swallow it if she got caught. Instead of taking it, Michelle brings the capsule with her as she joins the others at dinner. She approaches Ezekiel and thanks him for the process with a hug, which gives her the chance to put the poison in his drink. Before Ezekiel can take a sip, he's approached by the examiners to have a chat and the glasses mix. When they finally drink, an examiner ends up poisoned instead and he collapses on the ground. He's immediately taken to the doctors, but they can't do anything and he dies. The doctors run some tests and confirm the poison in the guy's blood, so Ezekiel begins reviewing the security footage. Meanwhile Raphael tells Michelle he saw what she did and that Fernando knows about them. Michelle goes to talk to him, but Fernando assures her he'll keep the secret. He doesn't care about the offshore anymore, he only cares about her. At that moment an alarm rings and the candidates are told they must remain in the hall until further notice. Then Michelle asks Raphael to get rid of her empty capsule, but suddenly Ezekiel arrives with guards so Raphael can only throw it off the balcony. One by one the candidates are interrogated in private, and Joanna starts to think this is a test. When it's Fernando's turn, he swears he knows nothing, but Ezekiel notices he's nervous and explains that if Fernando is protecting someone, he'll be considered an accomplice. Michelle is called next and Ezekiel shares a drink with her. He also notices her wound, so she pretends she was mugged before she joined the process. Ezekiel shows her a video of the body and the widow crying over him, but it doesn't break her and she keeps swearing she knows nothing so she's freed. On her way back, Michelle starts feeling sick. Fernando finds her and helps her calm down when she considers handing herself in. It seems Ezekiel's drink had a truth serum, but thanks to Fernando's help, Michelle stays in the corridor. Afterward Ezekiel tells the council that Aline did it. While the guards arrest her, Ezekiel shows security footage of the moment she poured him a drink. He also shows a video of the rebel they captured a few days ago, who pretends Aline has been working for the cause all along. Aline is given a chance to speak and she tries to share the dirt she has on Ezekiel, but Nair has hacked into her files and replaced them with her praising report. Meanwhile the capture rebel asks Kasha to keep her end of the deal and end things, but instead of killing him Kasha leaves. The candidates are sent to their rooms and Michelle finds Ezekiel waiting with the capsule. The next morning, all the participants are awakened with messages of congratulations on passing the process. Fernando goes to Michelle's room, but she's missing and her message is jumbled. At that moment Ezekiel tells him Michelle has been eliminated, so Fernando announces he wants to quit. He immediately leaves the building and finds an examiner outside who informs him they've used his own test to check his motivation, and he failed. Fernando freaks out and asks to see Michelle, but the gate closes and locks him out. In the meantime Michelle is being waterboarded, but she won't talk. Ezekiel tells the guards to leave and admits he and Kasha were suspicious of her from the start. He keeps demanding answers and grabs her hair until she explains she wants him dead because he killed her brother. However Ezekiel shows her a video proving that her brother is happily living on the offshore. He explains the rebels lie to recruit people and that he knows this because he used to be one. 
If Michelle shares information he'll let her go, but she still refuses to talk so he leaves her with more videos of her brother. Afterward Ezekiel chats with Nair, who now knows about Augusto from Aline's files and announces she won't support Ezekiel anymore. The winners are sent to the garden to go through purification, however Kasha takes Joanna to an office. At the garden, Ezekiel announces that the candidates must get a vaccination that will sterilize them. There are no children on the offshore because heredity was the biggest injustice that sustained the old world. There's only one true path to a superior society and that's merit, which is evaluated by the process. The winners are given a few minutes to think about it because they can still choose to leave. Raphael watches how most candidates go through purification and after lots of hesitation, he agrees to take the vaccine as well. Ezekiel visits Michelle again after she spent hours watching videos of her brother. He tells her she should get revenge for the actual dead people like Bruna and the poisoned examiner, who were killed by rebel plans. Michelle finally gives in and tells Ezekiel where she was supposed to meet her rebel handler if she got eliminated. Soon a bunch of guards show up at Michelle's neighborhood and arrest her handler. Pleased by these results, Ezekiel gives Michelle the vaccine and welcomes her to the offshore, explaining only a person that has been on both sides can be certain of their convictions. She'll have to spend some time in the recovery center first, but her brother can visit her there. Ezekiel asks if there are other rebel spies, but Michelle says there aren't. Afterward Ezekiel meets with Joanna because he has a final test for her, saying she has potential to be more than an ordinary citizen. He shows her a live feed of the man that attacked her before she entered the process and gives her the chance to kill him by just pressing a button. Joanna almost does it but stops herself at the last second, saying she isn't a killer. When Ezekiel calls her a weakling, Joanna laughs and says he's the weak one because he lost all his humanity. Then Joanna leaves the building and finds Fernando. She tells him Michelle won't come so he agrees to leave with her. They go back to their old neighborhood and Fernando sees his dad, but leaves without talking to him. At the facility, Ezekiel keeps thinking about all the deaths and throws a bottle at the water bowl before letting the wine fall on his head. Michelle joins the other winners and soon they arrive at the offshore. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.